Okay, so we're now going to look at the molecules. And the jack of all trades that the polymodal nociceptors are um, can, in part, in large part, be attributed to a jack of all trades molecule, a jack of all trades receptor. And that is the TRIP V1 receptor. Uh, the TRIP V1 receptor was first isolated uh, or first identified by David Julius and Michael Katerina uh, back in the no late 90s. And they, they isolated because this receptor is, is responsive to, the, uh, to capsaicin, which is the, hot, the ingredient in hot peppers, uh, such as jalapeno peppers and these delightful little peppers, which I don't know the name of, but I can't wait to eat them. <laughs> um, so hot peppers make an ingredient called capsaicin, and it is that capsaicin that gives you that hot spiciness. Um, and the the molecule that responds to capsaicin is uh, the trip is a transient receptor potential recept, uh, uh, receptor transient receptor potential. So it's the transient receptor potential receptor that responds to a vanilloid. The capsaicin is a vanilloid, so it's TRIP-V1. And TRIP-V1 was the first of the TRIP receptors, TRP receptors, to be identified and, and, and the first time that we realized that these TRIP receptors were going to play a huge role in somatic sensation, uh, particularly nociception and thermoreception. So the TRIP-V1 receptor not only responds to uh, capsaicin, it also responds to elevated uh, levels of pH. It also responds to, um, to high uh, thermal temperatures, so to a hot, hot, a noxiously hot temperature. And so re within this one molecule, you already have several of the, of the um, responses that the, tri that the uh, polymodal nociceptor responds to. The TRIP V1 was the only the first TRIP receptor that was identified. We now know that there are a lot of other TRIP receptors, and in general, uh, not in general, but the, the temperature range is divided up so that different temperatures are sensed, both noxious and innocuous, are sensed by specific molecules located either on neurons or not. So in, for an example, a TRIP M8 is a, is a receptor that is responsive to cold temperatures, um, TRIP-V1 to hot temperatures. And there are, other temp there are other TRIP receptors that are responsive to very hot or mildly hot or warm, et cetera. The, um, another, another very interesting uh, TRIP receptor, which I think illuminates a lot of the promise of these receptors, is, is the TRIP-A1 receptor. And this is arguably the, uh, or this is thought to be the, the first, the first to evolve, the most ancient form of a TRIP receptor was a TRIP-A receptor. The TRIP-A1 receptor is responsive to a wide variety of uh, stimuli, including cold, uh, including smoke, any, any derivative of a uh, vegetation, so smoke or smog, pollutants. Um, the, uh, if you're sitting in a, in a pool or a hot tub, you, that smell of what we think of as chlorine, that's hypochlorite, that molecule also activates the TRIP-A1, as does wasabi, as does mustard, as does cinnamon. It is a broadly response that this receptor is broadly responsive to a number of um, of components of uh, or, or air, air, um, airborne components, and it's the A1 receptor is densely present within the trachea. So the trachea has sensory nerves so that you can uh, detect changes in your trachea. You're not that aware of them most of the time, but they drive certain reflexes. So for example, if there is a, um, if there's capsaicin in the air, you'll cough. 
and the cough is essentially a withdrawal reflex. If you put your hand on a hot stove, you withdraw your hand. If you breathe in something that's going to hurt your lungs, you cough it out. That is a withdrawal reflex. You're getting rid of this uh, irritant. Um, and you also stop breathing for a moment. So there's a, there's a moment of apnea, so you don't take more of this stuff in. Now, there is an, an acute reaction to these uh, irritants, and that acute reaction is absolutely necessary, just as necessary as withdrawing your hand from a hot stove. But over time, the reaction can, can become uh, compounded and be can become more harmful than helpful. So over time, the trpa one receptor, if it's continually activated, let's say by smog or, uh, or cigarette smoke or, or, um, or a, a fire, fire, smoke from a, um, a wood fire, uh, then it's going to start to inflame the tissue that it, it, it innervates. And so trpa one is a possible candidate for a molecule that is targeted by, uh, in asthma, in the pathophysiology of asthma, that this molecule may become, uh, may uh, have become hyperactive and it made the trachea a very inhospitable place due to all this uh, stimulation from this exogenous um, uh, uh, irritants. So it's, a, it's one of the places where there is a, a lot of attention being paid to think about uh, trying to get uh, the trpa one receptor to do the good things that it does on, on an acute level, stimulate a cough, protect the airways, but prevent it from doing this overblown reaction that gets you into a chronic disease such as asthma. There are other... Uh, um, molecules that are specific to nociceptors, and these are of obvious interest to uh, pharmacologists trying to develop better uh, treatments for, for pain. Um, and one of them I will mention is, an N, is a sodium channel, NAV 1.7. So it's a sodium channel, sodium V 1.7. And this is a uh, specific um, molecule that is, uh, or, or sodium channel, it's the, uh, it's the, um, it's the voltage-gated sodium channel that's present in nociceptors. And what's really spectacular about it is that it works really well for nociceptors because it only gets activated at a very high level, fresh, at a very high threshold. So it's, you, you can have stimulation, stimulation, response, response, and it still won't fire off an action potential. You don't want to cry wolf when it comes to pain. So it has a very high threshold, and then it turns off, it, it turns off really slowly, so it has a very long action potential. So the result of that is that it takes a lot to get it going, and then it can't fire fast because it's in refractory period. So it has a very long action potential, and it, then it has to pause, and then it can fire again. So it can never fire really rapidly. NAV 1.7 is the target of, of many efforts um, to control acute pain. It is also uh, found in, uh, in individuals who have, some individuals with congenital insensitivity to pain have a, uh, have no, um, have a mutation so that they don't, do not have this NAV 1.7. And in the absence of that, these uh, neurons don't, don't work properly. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the axon reflex.